Happy Hump Day! Surprise week three! We're doing it tonight instead of Thursday. Because <laughs> I forgot that I have rehearsal. Um, if you're in Fort Wayne, there's a wonderful Christmas concert going on this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we're singing at the Allen County Courthouse. And so, if you're in Fort Wayne, come hear us sing. But tomorrow I have a dress rehearsal, which I didn't forget about, but forgot that that was the same time as this. So that's why we're here now. So welcome to those of you who've joined. I hope that you all are ready to do some crocheting. Also, I invite you to get your own festive beverage. I had dinner before this, and so now I'm having a lovely glass of eggnog. Because I like eggnog. So if you have eggnog or a cup of tea, don't drink coffee after noon, because then you won't sleep well. Um, or a glass of wine or something to just relax. So as we do this, I think that would be lovely. So go ahead and grab your preferred beverage. Or maybe a cookie, if you already do that. Sounds good. Ross, go grab your beverage and your crochet hook. I'm ready. Um, so, thank you. Hello, everyone. So, all right. So, this is week three of the Christmas Crochet Challenge. We are going to be crocheting together a washcloth. Now, we're just going to do the first step today, which is, like, the whole body of it. We're going to finish the border next week when we talk about finishing things, um, different variations. So if you wanted to make this a, a dish or um, a dish towel instead of a washcloth, all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're doing today. So by now, hopefully you've gotten your beverage. We'll say cheers to Christmas with our eggnog. Mm. Also, if you've never put eggnog in coffee, you should do that because it's very tasty. So, um, if you didn't or haven't watched the first two videos, just a quick recap. So the first video, and these are all available on Instagram and on YouTube. So the first video, what we did was uh, we talked about why, what is crochet and also what is all the different types of yarn, different tools, like the hooks um, that you use, scissors, all the, all the stuff that you need. So if you're hopping on like, oh crap, I don't have anything, go to that video You'll get everything you need to do this project. Week two, we talked about all of the uh, crochet, well, not all, but um, the crochet stitches. So we talked about chains, which are the, the very bottom row. That's how you start a crochet project. Then we talked about single crochet, half double crochet, and a little bit of double crochet. And then we also talked about slip stitch, I believe, or making the slip knot. But that, I mean, there's tons of stitches out there, but those three, we're not even using all three of those for our washcloth, but just kind of some basics to get you started so um, you can make other things and do what you want. So that was week two. So if you want to review that before you um, start the washcloth, or if you just want to like watch this tonight and then get on with it and review things, that's week two. So that's a video you want to watch for that. But this week, we are here to make something. We're going to do it. So, um, you can choose whether you want to do this with one strand of yarn or two. Like I had mentioned in week one, I think week one, or, or maybe week two, or both. Um, if you're doing it with only one strand of yarn, you don't need as large of a crochet hook. Uh, because if you use too big, then it'll be really loose and it'll be like a net, right? Also, if you're brand new at crocheting, when you were practicing your stitches, you might have noticed that either they're really, really tight or they're really, really loose. And so that's called tension. And so you want to make sure the tension is, is correct. So the size of hook you choose, as well as how tight you hold your yarn, is going to help with that tension. And it's going to help make sure that um, things go smoothly for you and don't look wonky. So, that being said, if you're using only one strand of yarn, you're going to want to grab your USH8 5mm hook. I doubt you can see that, but there it is. It's blue in mine. But if you're going to use two strands, like me today, because I'm actually just going to make another one of these, because I have a market coming up. I need some more. Um, then you're going to want to use... The J size 10 6 millimeter hook. Ah, you can see that one. Good. 
And last week, I um, tried unsuccessfully to film things like looking down at my board here so you could see my hands. But despite all my practice prior with my camera, apparently Instagram's camera is different than my camera and the focus was terrible. So we're just going to do this today. And then whenever I want to show you something up close, I'm going to kneel and get real close and show you like that. So that's what we're going to do. So anyway, all right, let's begin. Let's take one more sip of eggnog before we begin. Mm. I don't put nutmeg on my eggnog all the time, but sometimes it's good. Today I just went plain. All right, so anyway, so we've got our yarn. Okay, I'm doing two strands. You might be doing one, two, whatever. Cotton yarn, by the way, for washcloths. So, like we did last week, you have the end of your yarn. This is my right hand, this is my left. And you want to make like a little U, okay? Then stick your finger and your thumb in the U. Twist them towards you. Twist the U towards you. Grab this piece of yarn that is right against your pointer finger. And pull it through. Pull it nice and tight. And that is our slip knot. Okay? So that's what we're going to stick our crochet hook in. And that's how we're going to start our chain. So we insert our crochet hook right in here. And now we're ready to start our chains. So for this washcloth, we are going to start with um, 15 chains. So you'll notice in a lot of patterns, that whenever you chain, and I will write the pattern in the description, so afterwards you don't have to rem remember all this, but um, in a lot of patterns, you will chain one more than the amount you want in the row, because you, as we worked on last week, once you're done, like once you chain the bottom, you don't chain into the one closest, because then it would be weird. You chain into the second one, so that's why there's always one more. So our our washcloth is going to be 14 stitches long this way, but we have to chain 15 to start there. That makes sense. So let's do that. We're going to chain 15. So get our finger or our yarn in our fingers like this. And then you're going to yarn over, whoops, yarn over, pull through your hook once, yarn over, two, three. Seven, eight, nine, I'll go this way, you get it. Ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so I believe we should have fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, perfect. So now we have our little string. These remind me of those bracelets that uh used to make in grade school, but they were more complicated. I mean, you could, you could make a bracelet and sell this at a market. There's an idea. So I'm going to go take it. Um, it is fast. It's easy. You can do it. Um, <laughs> also I've, I think my hands are more used to doing this than sitting still at this point. Okay. So we've got our chains. So now we're going to single crochet into the second chain. So just like last week, you see, here's my hook. Here is the first chain. We don't want to crochet into that one. We want to crochet into this second chain. So you'll see there's all these little like V's, right? So we're not going into this one. We are going into this one. So we're going to stick our hook right in there. Yarn over, pull through. Now you have two loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through again. And there's your first single crochet. Insert into the V, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops. Let's do it one more time and then I'll finish the row. So into the V, yarn over. loops and pull through. All right, so now we're going to keep doing that till the end of the row. And I didn't even realize, but my 
two yarns, my red and my white. Oops, I did a half double crochet there. I half double crochet so many things that I sometimes go on autopilot and just do that. Um, no, but my red and my white yarn and my green hook. I'm just so Christmassy. I didn't even try to do that. But, yeah. Also, I am not someone who can crochet or knit without looking. Those people, I don't know how they do it, but I just, like, I, I'm only, a, I'm a one-track pony here. One-trick pony. One-track pony. So, I have to look at what I'm doing. So, I will look up at you every once in a while. But, I have to focus and look. Alright, so we're almost to our last one here. Okay, so you'll see, this is kind of like curly, but that will even out as we go. So, we've got one last one. So we're going to, and I will say, this first row is always the hardest. Because it's you don't have a lot to hold on to, and it gets a lot easier. So, um, alright, so we have one left. We're going to insert our hook. Yarn over, pull through. There's our, our two loops. Insert hook, pull through both. All right, so we've finished. We have single crocheted uh, 14 stitches across, okay? But if you remember, we chained 15. So we need to remember we're going to chain that one, okay? We chain that one so that we can chain into the second chain or the second stitch for the next row, if that makes sense. All right, so now... We, all we do is we single crochet back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for 11 rows total. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, and this time, now that we've gotten a row done, you're not going to just like go through in the middle of the V like that. You're actually going to go underneath the whole thing. Okay. Because if you did this, that's a different stitch. Now that we have a row, you actually go underneath the whole V. While we are single crocheting our hearts out for 11 rows, um, I just thought that I would chat. First row be hard is so true for knitting too. Um, yeah, that's way harder for knitting and I'm not as good of a knitter as I am a crocheter. Um, but I always have trouble, like I try and cast on not too tight. And I'm getting better at it, but I always, I'm like, I'm like fighting through, especially because I do a lot of things where I knit in the round, like hats and, um, like this infinity or this cowl and things. And so until I join, I'm like fighting, but yeah, I guess it's just the, the curse we all have. As knitters and crocheters, there's always something. I, I don't. I feel like even someone who's been doing this for like 30 years would still agree with us on that. Hopefully. Um, but anyway, oh, I guess I can sit in my chair now instead of kneeling. Um, so, I thought that I would just chat with you all and tell you a little bit about my crochet slash knitting story. Because, um, I don't know, I like to talk about it. And it's also... I feel like if you've ever met someone or, um, or if you are someone who knits and crochets, I don't know a lot of people who are just like, well, I never heard of this thing called crochet, but I saw it on YouTube once and I picked it up. There's always like, I knew someone or my grandma or my friend's grandma. And I think that's really cool because there's always a connection and... That, that's like, there's always love involved, whether for that person or the person's parent. Or, there's always some kind of connection, always some kind of story. So I personally appreciate that because I like that kind of thing. And I like traditions and I like telling things or um, doing things that have a legacy and a reason behind them. I'm actually like behind this, which this isn't even that nice looking. It's not like a fancy backdrop at all. We are in my basement and my guest room and my sewing table. Um, but I've been working on a quilt of my grandma's sweatshirts. And I will show you guys that 
uh, like fully done here in a day or in a, well, after Christmas, but so I have, this is for myself, like I've been sewing all these squares together and it's my grandma's old sweatshirts. And so just like something like that, I think it's very cool, um, that you can maintain connections with people and pass down skills and stories and stuff. And also from the homesteading perspective, because I also do have a lot of people who like to follow me for that. It's a very handy skill because you can make, obviously, washcloths. You can make all different kinds of things. I think I'm going to work on designing a, a Swiffer, like, pad, mop thing for dry Swiffering cause, and, and wet ones, maybe, because we just go through them way too fast, especially with Charlie now. So I thought making something reusable might be a bit more economical. But I'm going to work on that and then test it out and see if it is, um, if it works, because then I'll sell it, but, and I'll share the pattern with you guys. But anyway, so, rewind, many, many years ago, I'm 30 now, the ancient age of 30, and when I was, I mean, like, three, okay, my grandma had, like, an attic, that was where her sewing room was, was in her attic, and she would sit and sew and do all the things, and me, at three years old, would sit, there was this tin of buttons, which I have sitting over there now, and I would sit on her blue carpeted floor in the attic with her, and I would just comb through these buttons, and I would look through them, and I would make button necklaces. Yes, this will be recorded so you can catch up. So, all we're doing right now is we've chained 15 and then we're single crocheting 14 for 11 rows, if you want to do that. But yes, it will be recorded. It'll be on Instagram and YouTube, just like all the other ones. Um, but anyway, so so I would sit there on uh, the floor in my grandma's attic, and there's blue carpet, and I would just comb through these buttons. And I would make necklaces. I would also, she, teach, she taught me how to cross stitch, so I would sit there and, um, you know, play with the, like, plastic canvas and yarn and make all different kinds of goofy designs and all that kind of stuff. And so as I got older, she would just teach me different things because probably being a mom now, I, she just needed me to occupy my time with something. <laughs> and I was an only child, so I needed a lot of attention. But so she taught me how to cross this. She taught me how to crochet. She taught me how to knit. We never did get into this, like, sewing machine stuff very much, but, yeah, so when I was little, I learned how to do all that. And I would make, like, I think I made a couple scarves and nothing, nothing too crazy, but, uh, just, I, I doodled, I guess. I played around with stuff. And then I just kind of forgot about it. And I was busy. I was a figure skater. I was in theater and acting and all that kind of stuff. And so it just, I, I always thought like, oh, I use like ugly colors. I didn't really do anything. I didn't know that there was all these different types of yarn. I didn't know that you could make things to wear other than scarves. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. And I, um, you should always untangle your yarn before you use it because I don't. Um, but yeah, so I was just kind of like, ignorant to all this stuff. And so then fast forward a bunch of years and I was in graduate school in Georgia and I was like pretty stressed out a lot of the time because it's graduate school. <laughs> You're, you know, especially as I was getting my master of fine arts in acting. And so I was up late, really late for rehearsals. I was trying to memorize a bunch of things, doing auditions, also teaching on top of that. And so it was just kind of, I was very like single focus and I needed something that was going to chill me out because as my husband, now husband, then fiance said, I was just like way too stressed out, which I tend to be a stressed out person, but that's besides the point. Um, 
So anyway, I don't know what it was. I happened to, I think, be on Pinterest, and I saw something. I was like, whoa, that, that's crochet. Like, I know how to do that. Maybe I can re-remember how to do this, relearn. So my grandma was alive back then. I gave her a call and was like, hey, can you reteach me? And so she retaught me. We would video chat all the time. I talked with her all the time. And um, she retaught me. And then I also went on YouTube and used to like watch some of those videos too, which I would highly recommend because they're very, very helpful. Um, and so I think I went to Joanne Fabrics and got the cheapest yarn and the cheapest hook because I was in grad school. So I was not very financially, you know, rich, shall we say. I was on a stipend, <laughs> but I wanted something. So I just, and I also didn't know if I was going to stick with it. So I went and I, and I got, you know, some cheap stuff. And this hook was like the first hook I ever bought. This might be a replacement because I think I lost it, but, but that size hook was the first one I ever bought. And so, um, I got home and I, and I worked on some stuff and then I was like, Ooh, this is kind of fun. And I think I made an ear warmer was my first project and it was really not so great. But then I practiced and I made different things and I made like mug cozies and I made, um, ear warmers. Like I said, I made washcloths. I designed another, like a different washcloth, which was more, um, like for dishes and it was more rough. And so it had a cool stitch. I was playing with all these different things. And so I just really got into it. And then we moved to Indiana when my husband got his job after we got married. And that's when like March of 2019, I decided to make a business out of it and to give it a go. And so 2019 was a year of learning a lot. I'm still learning a lot. 2020 was a year of let's try this, but also you had a baby. So, <laughs> uh, you're gonna, you know, stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. And this year was the first year that I got to do any markets, um, farmers markets, and it's just been absolutely amazing. So I'm going to be able to now, after this year of just doing a few markets, I'm going to be able to use my like profits from the markets to put more stuff towards my website and towards being able to do more tutorials like this and do more designs and all that kind of stuff. So it's very, it's very interesting to think back on it since even just when I decided to do it as a business, but even more so to think about, you know, sitting there on the blue carpeted floor, which my grandma smoked cigarettes a lot. And so I have not only a vivid memory of like how the carpet felt and how the room was, but also how the house smelled, <laughs> which I know cigarette smoke is not healthy for you, but it's sentimental for me. So I don't mind it all the time, but, um, it's just funny to think back on when me, little old me, little, little me playing with those buttons. And now I'm teaching other people, hopefully, and getting some, uh, other people just as excited and, and contagious about this as, um, uh, as I was. And I, as I am, because it's not just for me, it's not just teaching you how to crochet, but it's, it's like passing part of my grandma on to you. And she was my absolutely, and still is my absolutely favorite person in the world. And so, yeah, that's my little, my little story there. So I hope that that inspires you a little bit. So anyway, back to our thing. I think we've got 11 here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yay. I started to kind of get a, I can tell whenever it gets to the size. Now you'll notice because I had a brain toot. Um, I used a smaller size hook for this. Okay. And this was this size washcloth. This is a little bit smaller, but it's much tighter. So this would be really, really good for dishes, especially because it's tighter and, um, like sturdier. Whereas this one's a little more floppy, which I wanted to do for my face. So just something to be aware of. Oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I just, see, that's the thing. I love that crochet is like, it brings people together, but it's, it's not people are like, Oh, why do you play with yarn? It's not just that I play with yarn. It's that every time I'm sitting here holding this, I am getting to spend time with this lady. 
Here's my favorite. And she made us matching shirts, which I just think is so cool. I'll go away, ring light. But yeah, I think she's so cute. So that's why it's important to me. Um, but anyway, so, so you'll see here that these two, this one is a little bit bigger and looser for my face. This one is tighter and a bit more um, dense because I used a smaller one, smaller hook, so that it could be more for dishes and stuff and scrubbing, which maybe I must take this for myself. Um, but anyway, okay, so that is the body of our washcloth, okay? So next week, we will meet, not now a different time altogether, but this one you knew about. Uh, it's going to be next Tuesday the 21st, okay, at 8 p.m., but um, Thursday is Christmas Eve, and, or no, the 23rd, no, Thursday is, Thursday is Christmas Eve, we're not doing Thursday, we're doing Tuesday, because <laughs> I just knew that, that with the holiday, people weren't going to make it, so next Tuesday at 8 p.m., we will finish this off, we'll do this nice white border around and even if you're just doing one color, you're still going to want to do that border because it gives it a nice finished touch and kind of makes it look more professional. Um, but yeah, so for now, you can, you know, if you are going to make this into a dish towel, you want to do a set, then maybe you could um, make like, just keep going, make this longer. Or if you want to make more than one, you can make a couple of these, like these, swatches here um and then snip it off but if you are not going if you're only making one i would take your scissors right now with me doo, 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 doo. okay here they are and if you have two strands of yarn just cut the colored one so keep the white one attached so i'm taking Just cutting my red one and then you're gonna pull the red one through so that's not gonna come undone the white one I am going to keep attached because that's what I'm gonna use to do my border so um, that's up to you if, if you have one strand of yarn or if you want to make multiples you can cut both you can always you know reattach we can go over reattaching the yarn uh, next week when we do the border so don't feel like you're stuck here if you want to make three of these go ahead and snip both leave you know four or five inches just so you're comfortable and then we will pick up next week with our last video in the series where we do our border we talk about I don't know maybe we could brainstorm some ways that you could fancy this up or how you might package it how are you going to wrap yours if you're giving them away I want to hear if you guys are making these for yourself or for someone else but, but yeah. So, once more, let's cheers to our eggnog, with our eggnog, to Christmas, to crochet, to family, to traditions, to you guys spending such a wonderful evening with me. Thank you for hanging in there. And yeah, I will see you next week, this time at 8 p.m. to finish our washcloths and wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Bye.